Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Dark Art Society podcast. My name is Chet Zar, and I'm your host. And today, I don't have a guest. It's been so busy, because the holidays are usually my busy time of the year, uh, with my online art business and shipping, and it's been a crazy crazy year this year been it's been really good uh got all the mystery boxes i created out with um the help of our little crew here and um so that's a relief getting that over but uh because of that i, I haven't been able to really line up a guest and do all that kind of administrative stuff so i thought i would just chat and tell you what's going on with me maybe this will be a short one maybe i won't even use it because I'm seem to be hit or miss with the solo podcasts. I've done I did one good one, the first one I did, and then I did I tried it again and it was so bad that I didn't even post it. <laughs> I just took that week off. So um but I wanted to have something up. Uh at least something. Something because I know a lot of people really uh, like to listen to it when it comes out every week. So anyway, um so I guess instead of talking about what's been going on with me, what I'll do is first I'll talk about new subscribers and tell everybody that if they want to join and support the Dark Art Society podcast, they can go to patreon.com slash darkartsociety and join up for as little as a dollar a month. Get in the private Facebook group, join the community. It's a great community, really um, active and a cool place to be in one of the few cool places on facebook really one of the few reasons to be on there um so here's the new subscribers okay let me read them off and also if you join you can you'll you'll get your name read on the show which is kind of cool okay we've got cy griffiths or c griffiths i guess cy or i think it's got to be cy i've never heard the name c but i've heard the name cy before it's just spelled in a way i haven't seen si Cy Griffiths, you're back. Cy joined, and then I think a lot of t- a lot of people join, and then somehow their pledge gets canceled, and then they join back up. So um, I mean, that's all good. I'm just I, I'm not sure why it's it's a strange thing because I think one of these other um, subscribers as well as someone I recognize, Gibberosis. Thank you, Gibberosis. Um, but I've seen your name again, so I don't know. I shouldn't make a big deal out of it. Maybe you just canceled your pledge and you, you needed to, and then you came back. I appreciate it. It's supporting the podcast. And finally, we have Ed Kenefick. Thank you, Ed. Thank all of you for supporting. I uh, really appreciate it. Couldn't do the podcast without you for sure. There's no way. There's just no way I could afford to do it <clears throat> if it wasn't being supported by you folks. So anyway, um, what's been going on? What's been going on? Uh, I've been going through, uh, aside from the, the, you know, the, just the busy time with the, the, um, holidays and sales and stuff. First off, I, I don't know if I mentioned, I did the, I know I've talked about the mystery boxes, but every year I do these, these things called mystery boxes where, you know, there's $50 ones, there's $150 ones, and then then some $500 ones, which was an experiment we did this year to see if anybody would buy them. And the mystery boxes have, you don't know what you're going to get. You know, it's like, all I guarantee is that it'll be more than the price of the, the, of the, uh, box. Uh, not the price of the box, like, $4, (laughs) $4, like the price that you paid for the mystery box. So if it's a $50 box, you're going to get, you know, more than $50 worth of stuff in there and 150 and 500. So, um, I did those this year and they just sold out so fast. The $500 ones, I think sold out in a minute and I did five of those. It was crazy, crazy. Cause I didn't know if any of them would sell at that um, price. So I was really shocked about that. It was great. And, um, and, uh, and the rest of them sold out, you know, within, I think within the hour. And um, so just blown away. Didn't seriously did not expect it. I really didn't because we've never had it happen like that before. So 
Um, and a lot of people were complaining that they missed out. And so we made some more and then those sold out really fast too. So it was great. They all sold out. I can't complain. Excellent. Thank you everyone for, for purchasing. People have been posting pictures of them online and, um, and they seem to be very happy with what they got in them. So, so that, because of that, it was so successful. I wasn't able to list any other new stuff in the store. Like I was thinking maybe putting some one-off resin pieces, just something for the holidays for people to buy for gifts. And, um, but that just took off so, so intensely that it just took all of our attention. So I still may put some, you know, maybe this week, cause, cause I think if people order, um, they, at this point, they still should get stuff by, by Christmas. Cause I know a lot of them are for, Christmas gifts. Um, so I still may put up some resin, unique one of a kind resin casts because those are always fun too. Um, but anyway, so that was kind of the big focus that's been going on. But on top of that, I've got two other things I've been looking into and, uh, well, yeah. Um, one of them being NFTs, which I, I just, I need to try. I need to try because the, you know, if, if for no other reason, I have all those animations I did for Tool back in 2004, 2009, from 90, 99, 98, 99 to 2004 when I put the Disturb the Normal DVD out. Uh, because they're just perfect. They're made for, for, for NFTs because they're digital looping animations. And it was like, you know, 20 years ahead of its time. <laughs> so, uh, I feel like, you know, they, they have, a, there's a platform for them now, you know, there's, there's a, there's a place to, to, to put them that makes sense because I put that thing on, you know, the original idea with disturb the normal was I was into, uh, 3d animation at the time. I would make these looping animations that were sort of like my paintings um, kind of, but more, you know, 3d modeled and, and, and rendered and just weird, dark, surreal animations that looped. And so the idea initially was, wouldn't it be cool to make digital? I mean, this sounds like a cliche now, but at the time I didn't know of anybody doing it. It wasn't a big thing. I mean, this is, we're talking like 2000. It wasn't like the time when the internet was, even that big really um so the idea was you know wouldn't it be cool to do digital paintings that were animations that looped seamlessly which is basically you know you've seen looping gifs now a, a million times um they're, they're just kind of throwaway things but at the time i was thinking put those put those on a flat screen monitor and then have a have a gallery show with all of these looping animations so that you know, they're like living, moving paintings. That was the idea. And at the time, flat screen t uh, monitors were like, you know, like really expensive, thousands of dollars, I think, uh, for one. And they were kind of thick and bulky. And, uh, and there was just no way I could afford to do it because I didn't have any money. But I had these animations. So I put them on a DVD. And that idea was like, okay, well, I can't do my cool art show. So what if I put them on uh, a DVD and then you could sort of put them on your TV and then your TV becomes like a picture frame and you can just have these looping animations on, put them on at parties or just put them on to watch or, you know, cause they're short little loops. Um, again, this doesn't sound like, anything unusual or, or you know sounds kind of silly now but at the time it was kind of kind of a cool concept anyway so sold those that was just you know one of the things i've done throughout my career and um after that after i did that actually that that disturbed the normal dvd that, which came it came about okay i'm not getting my story straight i started in 98 learning 3d animation right did some weird looping animations because I thought they were cool. Um, so I was really into 3D animation. Then I did uh, you, you, you Tool used some of them for the live shows. I was hired by them to create some more looping animations for the live shows. 
and um i uh so i i at that after you know okay so <laughs> they um uh, uh they use them for the live shows and then i ended up making a dvd the disturb the normal dvd right after that just as a product to sell after i, I did that all myself i did all the audio myself uh, the the audio is really cool it's really uh weird (laughs) it was fun but it just really kicked my ass and it was so much work that at the end of it i was like oh my god i don't ever want to do 3d animation digital ever again it really burned me out um it was just me and this this is back when i was in this in our cellar we have a little cellar and i I don't know what i was thinking i guess that was just the space i had at the time because it was just like this dusty ass cellar dirt it was, it was not a place you want to put a computer, but that's where I was working. And I, and I completed the whole thing and, uh, just, it wore me out. And I ended up painting after that, like really getting into painting because that was just like, I got to do something real. You know, I got to do something physical, something tactile. And, uh, that, and then I started the whole painting thing, the whole painting journey. And never went back to, to digital, really, other than um, some stuff I did when I was working in effects and, you know, stuff. I did some digital artwork for paintings and stuff and reference stuff. And anyway, just I I, uh, I really loved it. I love doing digital. It's super fun. So anyway, now that NFTs are a thing and blockchain's a thing, I'm just thinking I want to at least give those animations they're due uh i guess you know having them in tools live shows probably (laughs) getting their due enough but um i don't know they just seem they seem perfect for for the blockchain and nfts so anyway i'm gonna try that so i you know i'm setting that up i'm i'm just too busy to kind of take the plunge and mint an nft and deal with that yet so i figure uh maybe in january i'll do it the other thing that's going on um, is, uh, that I have been looking into YouTube and trying to, you know, you, you know that I've turned this podcast into a video podcast. So, um, I am releasing the podcast as audio only and as video, a video version for Patreon subscribers. And then, you know, I think a few weeks after that, I will make the videos public on YouTube because I really, my main goal of this podcast is just to get it out to more people. Cause I think it's really good. The, the interviews, I think the artists that come on are just so interesting and, and I, I just feel like more people need to hear it. So I thought, um, YouTube would be a great way to do that. Um, so I've been recording them with video and, that entails getting lights. I got all these lights. I've been buying lights, doing tests with video. You know, I've moved into my studio now because it's got a more interesting background. I've got my good camera in here for uh, my time lapses on my, for my own Patreon, which is patreon.com slash chatzar if you want to join on that. So there's been just like a lot of changes. You know, I'm trying to deal with these two things that are kind of new for me. And um, so it sort of disrupted everything along with dealing with uh, sales and, and getting the mystery boxes together. It's just been a lot of kind of like, I don't know, a bit of an upheaval um, because I'm learning, trying to learn this whole NFT game and uh, trying to learn YouTube, which is a whole other, you know, it's a huge thing. Like I've been researching YouTube a lot, like how to build a channel up. Currently, I've got like 1,200 and I don't know, 1,250 subscribers, but I've had this thing for like 15 years. I just never consistently kept up with it. So um, let me see how many I got. 1.27 thousand subscribers, so a little little more than 1,000. If you hear this, join my my page because I'm trying to uh, build it up so that I can get monetized. Uh, Just Chet Zar, YouTube dot com slash chat czar i think um but i've been posting releasing old time lapses on there and stuff 
So anyway, uh, but a lot of this has been about research. I've been watching a lot of videos on how to build your channel up. And I've been watching a lot of YouTube. And it's so depressing. <laughs> it's so depressing. It's really been like kind of bumming me out because some of the, the, the content on there, it's like there's so much potential to have. I mean, a, a, amazing. You could have such amazing stuff on there and there are some really great shows there's some really great shows stuff i i watch uh often um and cool little genres and it's it is great but there's but it's like the stuff at the very top is just trash it's just garbage it's stupid it's and it's kind of disheartening when you're trying to make you know really cool quality artwork and content and just seeing like yeah, these fucking influencer YouTube people are just, uh, they're awful, <laughs> horrible. <laughs> and if they're getting like tens of millions of dollars and they're just, it's just like, I don't know is if it's for kids or what the deal is. A lot of it isn't for kids though. It's almost like it's for uh, <laughs> people that don't know what good is, I guess. I don't know. It's entertaining somehow. I just can't relate to it. It makes me feel, it makes me feel out of touch. It makes me feel old. It makes me feel like out of step with society, which isn't that new for me really. Cause I've always sort of felt that way, but man, I didn't know it was that bad. I didn't know it was that bad that there's these like superstar YouTubers. They make so much money and they just make shit. It's crazy. It's just like another example to me of just society collapsing. <laughs> I know I sound like an old man yelling at the sky, but I don't give a shit. It's like, it's true. I really, you know, it really seems that's the way I see it, you know? So anyway, as much as I've been kind of excited about building this YouTube presence for the podcast and for myself as well, because I've got a, a uh, YouTube channel for the Dark Art Society, which is just, if you search YouTube Dark Art Society, I think it comes up. But there's only like 20 subscribers. And I'm slowly starting to release the um, video version of the podcast on there publicly, like uh, after a few weeks after I, I'd mentioned, after they uh, go to the Patreon people. So um, I've got these two channels, trying to get them going. Uh, I'm just trying to, I don't know, stay current and up to date on things and, and, and kind of, I don't know, think about being sustainable in the future. And uh, as far as uh, what I'm doing and how to take the dark art society further and get it out to more people. So, um, so that's what I've been up to pretty much. <clears throat> and all of that is very, again, uh, like I was saying, it's very, um, I don't know. I feel like I lost my footing a bit because I'm, I'm in these new worlds that uh, I was talking to Gabe about on the last podcast. It's, you know, getting out of your comfort zone and it is kind of uncomfortable. And, it, you know, on one hand, it's, it's, it sounds so fun. Like this, both, both things, NFTs, it's like the potential there is really exciting and fun. And same with YouTube. It's like, you know, there's so much stuff that hasn't been done on there, like really good quality content. And, uh, but at the same time, it's, it's overwhelming. And it seems like, man, I'm just like, you know, uh, 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 like an unknown on there in a lot of ways. It's like people, you know, I feel like I've got somewhat of an online presence on Instagram and Facebook and stuff. And, and people do know me from tool and all that stuff. But, you know, I feel, I go on YouTube and it's just like, you know, these, I'm posting these time-lapse videos and it's like, pff, they're getting like 20 views, 40 views. It's just like, nothing's happening on there. I know it's a long process and it's about having a schedule and, and, uh, getting people used to seeing your content and stuff. So it's all good. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in it for the long haul. Uh, I just need to make, work it into my workflow to where it's not a huge issue, a, a big pain in the ass to do. So that's kind of been what I've been up to. Um, not a lot of art making, you know, after 
uh, the chaos show was such a burnout for me. It really fucked me up. Um, and I've complained about it endlessly on the show. So, <laughs> um, you know, if you, if you're a regular listener and so anyway, I didn't want to paint after chaos. I was like, I need a break from, jeez, this is just, that was too much. So it's been kind of cool to be focusing on these other things, um, and step away from painting, but, um, you know, that only lasts for so long and I get the itch to paint again. And I did do some miniature paintings for the, for the $500 mystery boxes. I made these really cool little, um, I wish I had one to show. I made these two and a half by three and a half paintings and, and I found this frame online, really cool antique frame to put them in. So those are kind of like the big item of the $500 mystery boxes. And, uh, so those were kind of fun. And, and it's, and it's another thing to offer tiny paintings, but I do enjoy it. And it's, and it's, they're so much easier to, to sell and to work with, and I could make little frames for them and stuff. So that might be something I'm getting into, uh, in the near future as well. Um, the other thing that's going on is the book and I still haven't, they haven't, I don't think they've even shipped yet. I haven't gotten an email. I'm supposed to get an email from the book company once they ship. But as you all know, the supply chains, the uh, ships in the harbor are delayed and backed up. So on one hand, I'm kind of like, <clears throat> I'm glad they haven't shipped out yet because I don't want to get caught in that mess and get my books all screwed up. But um, I've got... Uh, Mike Carell's helping me put together a, a section of my website f for the dystopia book. Cause now that it's done, it's like, you know, there's a whole, the whole other issue of shipping them all. Like, like I said, they're twice as thick as the black magic books. I don't even know where I'm going to store them. I don't know what I'm going to do. Cause it's like, I got to have one car garage and a little kind of like, room next to it like a like a studio size apartment really small kind of built onto it and when i got those um black magic books i bought the rest of the stock when uh Bainart uh quit their uh, the publisher of the book they they stopped publishing books so they sold me the the rest of the stock at a good price and i got 500 books and they took up half my garage. <clears throat> and I'm going to get three times as many books for the dystopia book. And they're twice as thick. So I'm thinking that's going to probably take up my whole garage. Because three times, half, no. No, like it's going to take up probably the whole garage and that whole little back room, which already has a bunch of junk in it. So there's all these logistical things that are just going to be really difficult and shipping everything, shipping them all. It's so much, ugh. I don't, I got to stop complaining on here. Cause it seems like I, I just come on here and complain and I feel like an idiot for doing that. Cause it's pretty lame. Cause I, uh, I, I really shouldn't be complaining about anything really. Cause I've got a great life, but, uh, it's, there's just a lot going on and I just feel kind of like the overall theme of my life these last few months like ending the year on this with a ton of just unresolved things happening kind of uncertainty and not a clear uh path forward I guess I mean I I'm I'm kind of kind of got a path forward but you know, not a big, big future goal thing. Um, I've realized that about myself too. I'm, I'm more like task oriented than, than goal oriented, even though I've, you know, I've done a lot of things, big goals and completed them. I, I feel like I do better when I'm just like given a one specific task. I can really kind of focus in on it and get it done. But I guess I'm not a good manager, maybe like managing a big project. Like the dystopia project, I just don't know what's going to come of it. Um, when I first made the book, it was like, oh, I want to do, it would be cool. And, you know, 
pie in the sky dream. It'd be cool to do a TV series or a movie or a YouTube series or, you know, some kind of movie type thing, which still would be great. But, you know, now that I'm into VR and the metaverse is everyone's talking about the metaverse. It's like, I mean, a dystopia metaverse would be amazing. And it might be the dominant form of media, online media in the future. So that's another thing I'm kind of, that's kind of goes along with the NFT stuff and uh, blockchain technology. So I'm thinking about that too, but it's all very like, I don't know, just kind of up in the air. And uh, I'm not sure where it's all going to wind up. So, I don't know, it's just not a, <clears throat> I don't know, I feel kind of unsettled and, 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 so, and also with the, you know, with the chaos of the world is also kind of like <clears throat> just crazy. It's just crazy. I don't know what I'm saying. Every just, I just feel like, uh, I guess unsettled is a good word for it. But one thing, you know, when you get old, you realize that nothing stays the same. You know, it's like you go through periods where things feel a certain way and then, and then they change and then things are going great. And then the blah, you know, it kind of just goes back and forth. I mean, it goes both ways because when things are going good and everything's in order and, and moving forward, <clears throat> it's not always going to be that way. <laughs> it's going to get fucked up at some point. So you just got to kind of like ride out the even, uh, try and stay balanced and even and ride out the bad stuff and the good stuff. Not that I'm saying I'm in like this bad way or anything. That's not what I'm saying. It's just more like, a like, a like, uh, it just kind of like unsettled, unsettled. I should title the podcast unsettled. It's more like a feeling like that. Like, I don't know what's coming up really. It's, I'm just sort of like feeling my way through the dark, but this is how it's always been for me. This is how it was when I started painting and so how it was when I started um, getting into makeup effects and getting in the industry and working at new shops and all that stuff. So it's all good though. I'm happy. I just uh, feel strange. I wonder if you feel that way. Do you feel that way? I don't know. Let me know in the comments. <laughs> don't forget don't forget to hit don't forget to smash that like button and hit subscribe <laughs> oh god i don't want to be that guy i really don't i won't um so yeah that's going on um been think uh, thinking about my next solo show a little bit uh Copper wants me to do another show next year. And I kind of was thinking about taking the year off and having a show the following year. But then again, I started thinking maybe if I, maybe I could do chaos too and um, do all the paintings that I wasn't able to paint from the chaos series. Cause there was a bunch of chaos paintings. Maybe what I could do is do a smaller show this time and then and have the other, because we talked, I don't want to say names or anything yet, but the, there was another artist, it was going to be another two-person show, and the other artist, maybe they could have the main spot on the gallery, and I could just do a few pieces, and it just kind of like the pieces that I didn't have time to do for the chaos show. That could be cool. I could do that. I could maybe see doing that, although I'm afraid to commit to it at this point, because... The wounds are still fresh from chaos as much as that show was great and it sold out. It was brutal, brutal. So, um, that's it. That's it. I don't know what else to do. I'm just kind of, you know, I want to grow the dark art society too. It's like a big goal of mine and YouTube seems like the way to me, but I don't know. Maybe that's not even 
Maybe it's like a small thing. That's the thing I find I found is is that oftentimes when you when you're trying to do something, it's almost like just the trying is the important part. The making the effort on some kind of like energetic wavelength. It's like putting some putting effort out there is the activator. As long as you're willing to be flexible with it, because I found a lot of times when I am trying to uh, achieve a specific goal, it ends up leading me to something that I wasn't expecting that ends up being just as good or even better than the goal I had. So I, f- I kind of feel like if you have this uh, attitude of, of uh, flexibility, but p- uh, effort as well, putting effort in. I kind of feel like you'll make it one way or another, as long as you're willing to kind of go with the flow to a degree. So you put the effort out there, something's going to come out of it. So I feel like I'm, you know, at that place in my life, kind of my career, I guess, with the dark art society, with everything else. Um, So I'm hoping the new year brings more settling down and a clear path ahead, which I believe it will. That's the other thing. Can you hear the can you hear the cars? Can you hear that car? Now that I'm in my studio, I'm near the street. So that's an uh again, I had my schedule with the podcast in my office, which is at the back of my house, away from the street, and I'm getting all these other issues since I moved up into the studio. And it's another aspect of kind of the uh, unsettling nature of things, trying to adapt to this new world. I bet you a lot of people are feeling that way. I think that the the world is unsettled right now. It uh, it definitely feels that way. Although it's not like I get out much. but I see stuff. I talk to people. The other thing um, <clears throat> that's sort of been coming up as well, that sort of, this is a good example too of uh, going after one goal and sort of veering off and, and being uh, turned in another way. Um, since trying to learn about the NFT thing, and I've been doing that with Gabe Leonard. We've both been, because we're both looking to get in that. And our friend Josh Breckenridge, who's been on the podcast, we talked about crypto um, a while back. He's he's he knows how to mint NFTs and do all that stuff. He has been uh, helping us with uh, uh, Zoom video, you know, Zoom conferencing, help showing us how to do it. And Gabe's been getting really into digital three D art, uh, using it for his uh, painting references. And now I'm interested in 3D animation again. And so I'm starting to think, okay, you know, maybe I should, maybe I should get back into that a bit because I really did enjoy it. I was really, really into um, just artistically from a creative standpoint. I mean, there's, it's not just about making money you know the whole thing that i do it's like i'm trying to make a living doing stuff that i think are that are that's artistically inspiring to me that's kind of the game i'm playing uh if it was just about money i could do a a lot of other things probably make more money working in movies and trying to get in the game industry or something designing creatures but that's not the the goal i'm trying to do something I think is put moving me forward as an artist, but also, you know, able to make money because I'm not, I don't have a trust fund and I'm not independently wealthy or anything. So it's always got to make money. So it's kind of like this little game I'm playing. Uh, but seeing Gabe learning 3d has totally got me back in this mindset of like, okay, if I'm learning how to do NFTs and, I have this history in 3D animation and digital art, and I haven't done it in so long, and I used to really enjoy it. I'm thinking about maybe getting back into it, not 
to say I'm going to stop painting. <laughs> That's my bread and butter. It's my, you know, my first love really. Um, when it comes to art, but that could be a really fun thing to do. Like, even if it's creating like Gabe's doing, creating reference for painting, uh, for paintings, that could be really fun and, uh, and, uh, keep things interesting and exciting. I had done that early on. I, I've done that. I've done that before. I've done it with Photoshop. Um, and I always had this idea that I could sculpt 3d sculpt my references light them render them take a still frame and then use that as a reference but i never had the time to do it it was always such a rush to get my paintings done so um i may now be able to afford to do that and now that this nft thing is happening there's kind of like a, a another reason to incorporate digital because I'd be able to maybe sell um, reference material on the blockchain or 3D models or whatever. That was always kind of a thing that like I could use digital to to make set up references for my paintings, but it's like I got to make every all my time count towards earning money. Sadly, this is just the way it is. And so I wouldn't use references in Photoshop because I couldn't do anything with it. I couldn't really make any money off of it. So it, you know, I just went straight to the study. Sometimes I did, but I could see a whole new workflow coming out of this possibly. I know that's Gabe's doing this, I think, um, as well. So that's kind of exciting. Um, so Lots of cool things coming up. Next year should be interesting. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Everything's falling over. That's the other thing. The studio is such a mess. It's crazy. It's, it's, it's just a wreck. It's, I have to clean up because when things get crazy, everything, I cannot, I am not one of these people that can work and clean up as they go. It just does not work that way for me, especially when there's tight deadlines and high stress and stuff. It's like, I'm literally like, you know, throwing paper towels. I wipe my brush off. I'm throwing it on the floor. It's I'm bad. I'm bad about that. But you know, when I'm creating work to me, it's like the, it's, it's, it's all about creating the work and, you know, cleaning up after myself is the least of my worries. I want to focus everything on my, my painting or sculpture or whatever. Um, anyway, that's beside the point. I got to clean again, though, again, though, it's another aspect of this kind of like unsettled feeling I have. Um, uh, just set, setting the studio up for lights. It's like, I got all these lights. I'm not really sure which way to do it. And I'm trying different things. It's uh, a weird time. It's a weird time. But I don't know. I'm still excited and hyped about it. One thing I did want to mention too about seeing all that garbage on YouTube and, and these um, multimillionaire YouTubers creating dog shit for whoever i don't know is into that for some whatever reason one one kind of good thing that came out of that it's it really was like it really made me feel seriously bummed out like depressed you know uh for a while there but if any if one thing that positive that can come out of that is like if if nothing else it really strength strengthens my resolve to stay dark to keep the art dark and more disturbing than ever <laughs> because you know that's the dark artwork is is i think a reflection of of the madness of the world in a lot of ways and to me that's just it's madness it's madness it's not connected to nature in a healthy way. Um, it's fucked up. 
And so, again, it's like, uh, it makes me feel like, oh, yeah, well, I'm going to just, I'm going to make things even darker then. <laughs> I'm going to make shit even more fucked up. Uh, so, so you know, I, I suppose in, in a way that as dark artists, we are, we are needed even more. We are needed even more to counter- counterbalance that kind of madness. I just, these videos of these people showing their houses off and they're, Oh my God. It's like the channels are so stupid. So stupid. Like fake pranks or living these, like, I just cannot. It's so irritating. Everything about it is like everything I hate. The attitude. It's so phony. It's these people acting like they have these family channels of these people acting like they have these wonderful families and they're all good looking and they're all happy. And it's like, you know, it's bullshit. And they've got this ridiculous amount of wealth and they're just blowing it on these huge houses and Ferraris and shit. And it's just like, (laughs) it's, you know, so many people are just in living in poverty and misery and starving. And to see that it's just like, it's, I find it disgusting. I really find it disgusting. Uh, anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll end my, my old man rant. Cause that's pretty much what it is. There's really no, you know, when I think about it too, there's no, there's no true standard really of good. I mean, you know, when you look at, what we are we're, we're these we're living in this short little blip of time that's nothing compared to the amount of time that reality's been in existence and we're just these little puny little consciousnesses on this planet and you know none of us are right about anything <laughs> i don't know i don't want to get into that anyway i guess i'll keep this short maybe i'll i'll post this it wasn't too bad um so i guess that's it oh i know what i was gonna say one last thing i was thinking next week for the last episode of the year if i can figure out how to do it maybe doing a live q a session and do it publicly too. Uh, I mean, I'll let everybody in Patreon know and in the Dark Art Society uh, group on Facebook give everybody a date. So if they want to join on YouTube, um, I can do a live Q and A session and uh, but post it publicly again and try and get you know more people in from the outside if they're into it. Uh, let me know what you think about that too. Let me know what you think. I think that could be kind of fun for a last episode to keep the pressure low so I don't have to worry about getting a new guest or, you know, not having an episode that week. Um, so, yeah, let me know what you think. If you're on Patreon, let me know in the, in the comments and uh, or in the Dark Art Society cooperative group on Facebook. I guess that's it. I'm going to end it. 45 minutes, not bad talking by myself or somebody who doesn't really like to talk. Um, that's it. Hope you enjoyed it. And, um, I guess that's it. Okay. So I guess I'll have to say by myself, goodbye audience. I'll say to the camera now that I have this nice camera. Goodbye audience. (laughs) 